Next in last news, out of China, Xinjiang's Uyghurs didn't choose to be Muslim, new Chinese report says. Uh, Armin and I have been reporting on this for about a year now. Um, China has gathered up, at, at this point, they're estimating probably over the course of the past two years, maybe two million uh, Muslims to put through kind of like a brainwashing concentration camp there where people are being abused, they are being deprived of food and water until they um, until they reject their, their religion and things of that nature. It's an absolute disgusting human rights violation. And people are starting to fight it now. Uh, last week, we reported that there were 22 states uh, in, in Europe who uh, petitioned the UN to actually do something to stop this. Well, China came up with 30-something countries saying, hey, you know what, this is great, no, it's cool, uh, let China continue. So now China has come up with a report saying that, and it was it was by the uh, Chinese State Council Information Office, saying that Zhejiang is a religiously diverse community where a number of faiths coexisted for centuries. They said that um, they respect citizens' freedom to believe or not believe in any religion. However, Islam was introduced uh, to the people in this area during a religious war in the 10th century, which ended Buddhism's centuries of dominance. They're saying that there, these people's conversion to Islam was not voluntary. It was not a voluntary choice made by the common people, but a result of religious wars and imposition by the ruling class. It says Islam's neither... Um, Islam is is not dedicated solely to that region. It's not it's not a founding religion of that area, nor is the sole belief system of the people. So what China is doing now is come up with a a six thousand eight hundred word document, um, basically explaining their rights to take these people and just kind of reeducate them um, back to the way they were. Okay. So they're trying to, okay, so I, I'm trying to understand what they're trying to do here because we know we, they have done a lot of crazy shit against Muslims. They put one million Muslims in concentration camps. They arrest them, they stop them, they check their phones. Um, they, they're extremely abusive. But now they're coming up with a, so, I mean, China is extremely efficient at what it does, unfortunately, in here. And I think they're also now preparing the stage for an ideological uh, you know, uh, it seems like they just want to just wipe this Islam completely off the map, right? Uh, from yeah, China, right? Yeah, that's absolutely their goal here with these. Right, or or at least make a Chinese-approved version of Islam. In, you know, so even if there is anything like that, but I know I know this is not something they do. They know that they're not going to be able to achieve. But it seems like they're now are creating a report. What's the point of this report? The point they're saying that. You know, there's other. This is not an Islamic part of China. This is a very diverse part of China. Like we know that this is a majority Muslim part of it, but they're trying to downplay Islam, is right? How they're saying they're making two main points based on what I heard you said, right? They're saying first of all, stop calling this Islamic part of China. This is a very. There's other people here as well, right? So they want to point, say, yes. Yeah, so even though it is, they're, they're extremely minor, they're just, like, they're just been like, no, Islam is just one of the many things, and they're not pointing out that it's the vast majority of the people that are Muslim, right? The second thing that they're pointing is like, look, this price was not Islamic. It, they just forced Islam here. Well, you know, like, they tried to, I think they're listening. <laughs> I think I think some Chinese uh, of officers are watching alt-right or Hindu videos on YouTube and like all oh, these uh, they're like oh these Islamic imperialism but Islam here and this by force and by sword I'm not saying that's inaccurate but I'm just th I think they're learn they're just trying to learn how to do uh, you know how to fix their Islam problem the the interesting thing though is correct me if I'm wrong if somebody knows this I, I know well I mean I know this but I don't know if it's the same part of China because China was one of the first places where Islam went to. Some of the earliest mosques after the alleged date that Muhammad died was built in China. Like if you look at the list of mosques that you have that were built within the first 100 years of um, after Muhammad, one of them is in China, which is pretty, like how did it get that far so fast, right? That's amazing, right. right? So, if they're suggesting like, oh, this is this was a 
this was an Islamic area, like you know, you were you guys were one of the first people that were going Islamic. I just I, the only reason why I hesitate to say this because this this whole chi- Islamic part of China might be completely on the other side of where Islam for, came first, and I don't really know the history of how Islam grew in China. I I do know that in, in uh, Islam did spread by the sword in many places, including North Africa and in the Middle East. But I also know that in Malaysia and Indonesia, Islam didn't spread by the sword because they're saying Islam came to China by force, right? Because in Indonesia and Malaysia, it didn't sp- come to Indonesia and Malaysia by force. It came there by trade, okay? So I don't know how it, came, how it grew in China, but I thought because in Indonesia and Malaysia, it came by trade and not by force, I just assumed that China probably was part of the same trend not the North African and Middle Eastern trend, more like Malaysia and Indonesia because, you know, it's closer to there. So maybe I'm wrong or maybe these Chinese people are just making shit up. Uh, Somebody tell me. But the thing is, it doesn't really matter. I mean, it does matter, but not for the point that they're making. Like what happened before, like this is exactly the problem that Palestinians and Israelis have and this Americans have with the whole uh, slavery thing and also the native things. The people today are not accountable for the actions of their ancestors. Like, so what, what is the point that they're trying to make? Like, oh, Islam doesn't belong here. No, Islam doesn't belong anywhere because it's nonsense. It's not because it came by force. It's not because of stuff that happened. This is the 10th century, right? Not this, Okay, so this is a thousand years ago, right? So they're saying that these forced actions happened a thousand years ago. So, yeah, so what? Even if it came peacefully, it's nonsense. But the way you're treating people is still shit, and it doesn't really matter how it came, like, if it came by force or it didn't come by force. The people that are living there today, they didn't bring it by force. They didn't, they didn't behead anybody. They didn't race. I mean, there are some terrorist attacks, okay, uh, in China by some Muslims. But those are just those terrorists. Not everybody don't collectively punish the entire Muslim community, right? But most of the time when when arguments are made like oh islam spread by the sword it's usually bef- it's, it's usually and i and i'm almost sure that's what they're trying to get at it's usually an excuse to attack or mistreat a group of people that are living today for the actions of people that for the crimes that people committed hundreds of years ago that's usually the point and I, I will, f- here's the thing, I'm fi- I will fight Islam in Indonesia, okay? Even though Islam did not come to Indonesia by sword. It did not come by force. It, Islam came to Indonesia peacefully and people chose it. But Islam is a disease regardless of how, how it came. It's nonsense and you fight it and you fight it by befriending Muslims and not putting them in concentration camps, okay? You the best way to fight Islam is to talk to people, not f- jail them or force them to eat pork and drink alcohol like these Chinese, uh, like the Chinese government is doing. Um, does that does that does that make any sense? Does that absolutely? Yeah, spot on. Um, okay, let me just read the top comment. Um, My- Michael, your comments are a little bit long, so that's why it's hard for me to keep track of what you're saying. Um, Laura is saying China is willing to respect a person's religion. However, when people's per- when a people's personal religion starts to interfere with the public and government, this becomes the whole other issue. Okay, let me stop you right there, Laura. Let me stop you right there. You're you're still blaming other people for what you're still collectively blaming an entire group of people okay if if some muslims are do, doing something you cannot go punish other muslims for the crimes of the muslims that you're you're saying like okay, so you're so if I, I think laura is defending china and he's saying oh china is first of all it's just it just starts wrong china is willing to respect a person's religion no <laughs> okay china is one of the most uh, authoritarian governments there is they're not willing to respect any like anything that they do is for 
is in their interest to gain more control. The only reason why they no, do not go outright, um, you know, arresting everybody is because first of all, they don't have resources, and also the ba they understand that the backfire could be if you if you corner if you corner a dog, the only thing you could do is bites. Like China is extremely efficient, and knows they know what they're doing. They're doing it slowly. They're doing it. I mean, some of the things they've done is extremely ridiculous, but they're not that ridiculous for them to go out and completely ban religion altogether. Like they say, like, oh, you need in your churches, you can't have the cross or you can't have this. You have to get a license, but they won't go outright completely ban it. They can't say like they, they don't say like you cannot have a church at all. They, they have destroyed a lot of churches, though. So I don't understand where this Laura, Laura is getting this. Laura, Laura is saying China is willing to respect a person's religion. Are you serious? You know how many churches China has destroyed? Um, Countless mosques. Mosques and churches, yeah. yeah. Um, Laura is saying as long as people keep their personal dogma to themselves and their churches, there has never been a problem. What the f fuck are you talking about, Laura? First of all, why? Why? Sh first, that's against freedom of speech. Okay. I hate Islam and I hate Christianity, but I do not demand Muslims to keep Islam to themselves. I think Muslims should be able to uh, preach Islam and Christians should be able to preach Christianity. You're saying that as long as they keep it to themselves, there's no problem? This sounds very or Orwellian. Like what, Laura, I hope you never become a world leader or something because you sound like a you make good excuses for dictators like as long as you blame this is exactly what the abusive boyfriend would say uh it, it, like seriously it's like you know i'm a loving boyfriend i love you i treat you well just keep your mouth shut i know your place and i won't beat you if and remember when i do beat you it's not because i don't love you and it's not because i treat you nicely it's you just spoke when you weren't, you just spoke, you raised your voice, you said something you weren't supposed to say, and that's why I'm beating the crap out of you. You're really doing this to yourself. You're really doing this. I'm hitting you, but it's hurting me more than it's hurting you right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, okay, I'm not going to read the rest of this. This is just way too long. Let me just read the ending. I just don't see China being a country run by dogma, and this is helps to keep them ahead where science and technology are con concerned well laura it, china is being run by dogma it's being run by a different different dogma it's chinese authority it's not communist by the way china is not communist it's, the communism is just in the name now uh, but it's authoritarian definitely it's a dictatorship it's a fascist government china is a fa fascist government and it's completely dogmatic is they might be removing Islamic dogma or Christian dogma, but they are they are a bigger dogma themselves. I mean, the whole the the reason why we don't like Islam and Christianity is because it causes misery. Okay, it causes misery and pain for people. Okay, but if you think like, oh, let's let's attack Islam by causing misery to people, to millions of people. Then you're you're missing the entire point of why we're against Islam, okay? You're missing the entire point of why we're against Islam. If in the process of trying to attack Islam, you're causing harm and misery to millions of Muslims, okay? Anyways, um, Michael is saying sorry. I was trying to explain. Okay, okay, that's for the previous news. Let me see. Okay. Ali, did you want to add anything to that? Uh, no, I just wanted to remind everybody about our protest. August 17th, free Sohail. Yes. Um, if you can't make it, if you can't join a consulate near you and, and try to be a part of a protest out there, please just post a picture of yourself with a hash hashtag holding a sign, free Sohail, um, so you can help us bring this more attention. Yes. And again, guys, sorry for the technical difficulties. Help donate to Atheist Republic so I could get a better, better computer so that we Please. don't have lies. <laughs> yeah, so links are in the description. And also, subscribe to our newsletter just in case 
we can reach you through YouTube or Facebook or all social media and Twitter. They, we lose it. Uh, you know, our newsletter is the safest way for us to reach you and make sure that you don't. Sometimes even if you're subscribed, you don't get any notification. You, we, YouTube decides not to show to you that we're live um, or uh, that we had a new video. We'll send them to our newsletter subscribers. So check in the description um, for yeah for to subscribe to our newsletter and also all the other and if you don't want to subscribe and you don't want to donate you could also help by just sharing our videos atheists are under attack in many places if they were christians their voices would be heard if they were jews their voices would be heard if they were muslims their voices would be heard but they are atheists and not many seem to be listening let's make it difficult for them to ignore us we have built a global community, and now we are tearing down geographic, cultural, and language barriers so we can find each other and support each other. In the last decade, we have built the largest atheist community in the world. Now we are doing the same in other languages. With your help, we have started Atheist Republic in Persian and Arabic. انضميت مؤخرا لأسرة Atheist Republic وحيصير عندي بودكاست باللغة العربية. As we grow, we can dedicate more time, staff, and resources to start doing the same in Spanish, Portuguese, Malay, Bengali, Urdu, Hindi, and other languages. We are providing community, support, informative content, and amplifying the voices of those who need protection, especially in countries where people feel isolated simply for their lack of belief. We want to be there for them, and we are only getting started. Help us get there. Check in the description for ways you can support our projects.